On behalf of Pastor and Lady Ming and the Retrieve Your Life family, we welcome you to Retrieve Your Life Ministries, a church that is looking up, reaching out, and caring for all. Let's go to today's sermon, MIA, Missing in Action. You can stand, you can sit. You know, we, 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 we just as untraditional as they come. <laughs> Amen. However you feel comfortable with the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you, God, that you've just been God and God alone. That you brought us through another yes, week with turmoil, mm -hmm. with trials, with tribulations, yes. with tests. Yes. But God, yet you've been faithful. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. So we thank you for your love, for your unconditional yes. love for us, God, that you brought us through another week and allowed us to be here today to serve you yes. on the first day of the week. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. God. Now, thank Father, I'm asking that you be a blessing upon each and every man, thank woman, you. and child and family that is represented here this morning. Yes, yes. Lord. Touch them, God, as only you right can. Now. Yes. Right now. Nurture them through your word. Yes, yes. Lord. Strengthen them, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is that they're needing, O oh Lord, thank supply it as you said in your yes. word, yes, that you Lord. will supply all of our needs. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. So we're looking to you right now, Father. Right now. Right now. We look to you for our strength. Yes, yes Lord. We look to you for direction. Yes, Lord. We look to yes. you for release. Yes. Whatever has us bound up this morning, God, we ask that you release it right now in the name right of Jesus. Now. Yes. yes. For we're tired of carrying these chains. Yes. Yes. I want you to carry all the chains for each and every last one of us yes. this morning. Yes. From the pulpit yes. to the door. Yes. Because you are worthy. Yes. Receive our praise. Receive our worship this morning, oh God. Yes. God, I thank you for each and every man and woman and child in here right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just want you to just be a blessing to them. Yes, Lord. Bless, retrieve your life, Miss. Yes. Yes. Enlarge our territory. Yes. Oh. Yes, Lord. Because like only you can, oh God. Yes. Only you can increase. Yes, Lord. <laughs> We stand before you right now. Right now. Right now. And we know we're so undeserving of your grace and your mercy. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. But Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that you brought us through. Yes. We know the enemy is abound, oh God. We know that the enemy is even here this morning. Yes. yes. But we're not going to worry with him this morning. Yes. We're not going to give in to the devil. We're going to stump the devil out yes. because your presence is here. Yes. I don't know about everybody, but the presence of the Lord is here. Yes. Yes. Lord. Yes. Feel the power of God this morning. Yes. Thank you, O oh God, for your power. Thank you, Lord. Give us a power service this morning, Lord, yes. like only you can. Yes. Father, I ask you right now to put your power to the speaker this morning. Yes, yes. yes Lord. Let your voice be heard like a roaring river. Yes. Powerful. But let it be receptive. Yes. Bless us. Yes, Lord. Bless this ministry. Yes. And keep us under your bosom. Yes. These are all things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Amen. Before the Lord, you, can you imagine? Oh, what will you say? Thank you, Chief. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. By His thank glory. You, Lord. Yes. What will you say? Yes. Thank, thank you, Lord. Yes. If we can only thank imagine. You, Chief. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. You all know how we do it at R.Y.L.M. We're going to get a little humor oh, here. Thank you, Mm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. This lady was in an accident. Yes. She was three months pregnant. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Lord. While she was in the hospital, Thank six you, months God. later, she delivers her baby. She wakes up out of a coma. Mm. 
When she wakes up, she looks around and she looks at the doctor, she feels her tummy. And in amazement, she's looking around. The doctor say, you're okay. You had twins, a boy and a girl. Your brother named them. She said, oh Lord, not my brother. He HDAD. <laughs> the doctor said he did a pretty good job. She said, what did he name him? She said, well, he named the girl Denise. She said, oh, thank you, Lord. She said, and what about the boy? The doctor said, the nephew. <laughs> sheep and one of them wanders away will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off if he finds it I tell you the truth he is happier about the one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off in the same way your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. Amen. Amen. Just as the shepherd is concerned enough about one lost sheep to go to the hills to search for it, so is God concerned about every human being he has created. But still happen, this still happened in churches all over this world. There are so many who have wandered off. Which brings me to my title, MIA, Missing in Action. There are so many casualties on God's war plan. Some, some of those casualties are right here in all these churches. And I can tell you one of them. One of the casualties in the MIA, the missing in actions, are those who come to church just on Sunday mornings. Just to be seen, dressed down, for somebody to see how good they look. They don't come with a prayer on their lips. They don't come with worship in their heart. They just come to be seen. Then you don't see them anymore because they go MIA. But they come back on the next holiday, but they still MIA. Another casualty on this war plane is 
Christian folks. Us, me, you, we run people off. And I tell you why. We're secret keepers. We see two people standing around having a conversation and we have to be seen, us Christian folks. We go and just want to pull one off, want to whisper to them in private. Leave the other person standing there and they just standing there wondering what, what really happened? Are they talking about me? Did she have something to say about me? They get an attitude for, for no reason at all. But that was your fault for interrupting their conversation. Amen. So they go missing in action. And I can go on talking about people missing in action. But God say, missing in action, MIA, you're going on a search for my people. Missing in action people are people who used to walk with the Lord. But somehow they have lost their way. And it's up to us, you and I, to go and look for them. Sometimes we all fall, but we God give us abundance of strength to get back up. But don't go looking for them if you ain't in God's strength. Because see, sometimes they fall by the wayside with Satan. And if you don't have God and you ain't got the word in you, Satan got something for you. You go in one of them clubs looking for them because they went back out on the dance floor. Oh, I'm okay. I got this. You going on in there and that music starts sounding real good to you. And you sit down. Now you MIA. Because you just said, oh, I can handle this. I'm just going to give me a little cooler. You shouldn't even win in the club looking for them. Continue to pray for them. That's what you do. This takes me to three points I'm going to give to you so you can help these people in, that's MIA. Point number one, pay attention. Look around you. In order to see who's missing in action, you have to know who's around you. Look around, look at the people next to you sitting in, in service today. Some of us have our favorite seats. <laughs> now these people that are sitting in their favorite seats, or you see them all the time, look around you. One Sunday they not here, and you say, hmm, they not coming today. I wonder what happened to sister so-and-so, so-and-so. Next Sunday, they not here again. Oh, wow, I don't know what happened to them. Third Sunday, not here. What we call them? Missing in action. But we have to go and look for them. Do we, do we give them a phone call? Might be your favorite person to have a conversation with. Oh, are they okay? They be back. You don't know what a person is going through. That's right. But you don't go and look for them, you don't call them. You ask, you ask Sister Pat, hey, have you seen somebody? <laughs> no, she probably be back next week. You don't know if she coming back or not. You don't know what happened to her, but you're not concerned because guess what, we Christians so selfish. Me, 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 I'm gonna think about me right now. It's not about her, cause she, she all right. You don't know what's going on with your neighbor. That's right. We all know somebody that's missing in action. God commands us to go out and get them. They're lost. Somebody is waiting on you to give them that call to come back. Yeah. Just that call to say hello. Somebody is waiting on you to come and get them. But we're so concerned in our own little circle of friends, family, co-workers, church folks, They'll be back. That's what happens. Missing in action. But you know, this Christianity thing is bigger than us. It's not about us. That's right. God called us to do a work. We have to be just like Jesus. We have to walk around and go out there and teach. Teach them. Go out and teach all ye nations. But we don't want to do that. We want to teach right here 
in the four walls. We're not teaching outside. We're not teaching to the lost. We teach it to the ones that say they're saved. Saved from what though? Because we all saved from something, huh? But have you really gave your life back to Christ? Have you really gave your life back to Christ? I'm talking about me too. I ain't just talking to y'all, I'm talking to me. Because I, I know some folks missing in action. I ain't went and got them. Because I said the same thing y'all said. They probably gone to another church, it's okay. Oh, I heard, oh, you, girl Sharon talked to her, she all right, she be back. But that ain't what the word tell us, is it? Philippians 2, 3 through 4 tells us, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not, each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others to the interests of others. I'm trying to look at nobody else's interests, is me? Selfish. I'm gonna look at my own. I ain't worrying about what they going through. I don't care what they going through. I see them when I see them. And then you see them and smile and hug them. I was thinking about you. I do y'all just like I do them too, really. <laughs> Really? Because I ain't heard from you. How much were you thinking about me? Were you thinking about me or were you talking about me? Because that's what we do. We see them somewhere falling and we call out the next person. Church folk, our, our next Christian friend. Yeah. Girl, I seen them going in the liquor store. Girl, I seen them going in the club. You see that dress she had on? Call herself a Christian. Uh, should have had a V8. You call yourself one too, huh? Hmm. Selfish. Yeah. Knock some sense into yourself because you still like them folks drinking them V8s. They leaning. Yeah, you better get some, some straightened up about yourself. Get some straightened up and fly right. This Christianity thing ain't about you. This is about God. He called us for a reason. We accepted the call for a reason. You know, we ain't accepted to walk around just to come in and wear our collars and our, and our, and our color every first Sunday. Huh? Bible study. <laughs> Sunday school. That ain't all he called us to do. Then you go somewhere where you should say a word and you tuck your tail. Because now you're ashamed to say a word. You better get some boldness about that walk you're trying to walk on. Before you get smashed like one of them little bugs. Because Satan got something for you. Keep on playing. He got something for you. Amen. And another thing. You know what? We need to stop judging people that's winning MIA. Because who are we to judge? You know, stop talking about people. If they MIA... And they, whatever they doing, went back on a drinking binge or smoking binge or whatever kind of binge they went on or just not coming to church, stop talking about them and pray for them. That's what we do. We talk about them, so we beat them down. We wound our own soldiers, don't we? Yes. We just keep talking about them. Then want to smile in their face. Hmm. All right, now. That brings me to point number two. Search and rescue. Whatever it takes, love is the key to reaching people who have walked away, drifted away, or just strayed away. When we say we truly love somebody, we'll do whatever it takes to get them back to walking the right way. And you have to be bold about it. But that's not all we do. Our job is to go out for search and rescue. And, and again, Stay in your word, because that's what, that's what you're going to need to be equipped with, the word of God. You ain't going on no search and rescue out in no park and everybody drinking, and you finna stand up there and say, y'all know y'all shouldn't be doing it. So we, because you ain't fed up in the word, you ain't got your fix. So now you going out there, one ain't going to hurt. I think I'm just going to drink, drink this one so I can just soften them up a little bit and then hit them with the word. 
Really? Yeah, they're gonna hit you with some words. You ain't, you not, re you not really ready. When you're going out on that search and rescue, you better have, you better put on that full arm of God and be ready. Because them darts gonna be flying, they gonna call you all kind of holy, roly, who you think you are, I saw you, or you think you're better than everybody else. Who you think you are, y'all church? Your church too, little church folks. Y'all talk about everybody and be right back up there on Sunday. I heard you. Then what you gonna say? Well, all I did was try to tell you what the words say. You ain't told them anything from the Lord. All you did was walk in there to soften them up with a cooler. You doing the same thing they doing. Come on now. You think they finna follow you back to church? Now, nah. it's okay. I ain't gonna say, I'm not gonna sit up here and say, I won't drink a cooler. I'm not gonna say that. But I got folks who watching me drink that cooler. <laughs> so they can say, no, she ain't, I told you she wasn't no Christian. She ain't no minister. She's drinking. You gotta watch them folks. Cause they waiting on you to take that first dip. You know, so watch your surroundings. Watch when you go on your search and rescue. Know the folks you going to search and rescue. Know the folks that need rescue. Everybody not ready to be rescued. God sends you to people and places. Don't go on your own thinking I'm finna save somebody cause you ain't got the power to save nobody. Go where you need to go. But we don't want to go where God sent us. Oh, no, I can't go down in there. I'm going to go out here where I can be seen, where the light's shining on me. Mm -hmm. Stand on out there where the light's shining on you. Because you all dark all up in there. You all dark. Ain't nobody seeing you for real. Ain't nobody hearing you for real. Keep playing with God. That's what's gonna happen. Keep playing with God. And you yourself, you'll become one of the MIAs. And you know, sometimes we get in mind that those missing in actions, you say, hmm, I ain't gonna never, I ain't gonna never do that. I ain't gonna do what they doing. You only a step from doing what they doing. Come on now. Matter of fact, you probably already doing what they doing, but don't nobody see you doing it. All right. Smoking, drinking, dancing to the wrong tune. You doing it, but God see you doing it. Church folks might not see you doing it, but God see you. And we do just like the MIAs with our attitude. Let somebody say something wrong to you at church and you didn't want to hear it. Yeah, I ain't coming back Sunday. You won't even accept. You know, people say things, they don't mean it. You say things that you don't mean, but you won't even accept an apology or forgive nobody, but you want somebody to forgive you. Or you will say, oh, they okay. She know what I meant. <laughs> really? You just gave her the greatest insult and you she know what you meant? Mm. Then you had to, somebody corrects you on it. Mm. And then you had a nerve to say, oh, I'll catch up with him. Come on, teach that. You let her walk on away, but you're going to catch up with him. When? Because she ain't coming back because you done ran off. Go get him. Search and rescue. Go get that one that you done just ran away. Come on now. You know, stop sticking the stick in our wounded. That's right. Get them back. We all have hurt somebody, mm. said some hurtful words. Yes. Be big enough and bold enough to go get them. Oh. It's gonna be okay. Yes. But you got to humble yourself. You know how to humble yourself? Hmm. Prideful people. That's where we are. We've been to humble ourselves to nobody. 
Mm -mm. On Sundays, we want to act like we are, though. On Wednesdays, we want to act like we are. In the presence of Christian folks, we want to act like we humble ourselves, acting humble. All right, keep playing with the God. Keep playing with God. Point three. Restore people. We have to forget about yesterday. We have to forget about what people have done to us. Stop worrying about what somebody else is doing and worried about what you're gonna do. Because see, we we bring our past right on into our future. That's why we so jacked up in a lot of relationships. Your past is just what it is. Your past. Leave it there. Leave people there. It's okay to leave people in your past. That's why they not in your future. Stop going back getting them deadbeat folks. That's gonna keep bringing you down. It's okay to give them occasional wave. It's okay to call them and, hey, how you doing? Believe them. They still doing the same thing y'all was doing 20 years ago, 10 years ago. But then they want you to come and hang out with them. Come, tell, come hang out with me. Get some of this newness. You ain't got, tell, you ain't got to be like that. They ain't gonna feel you the first time, but restore. Keep on going back and talking to them. Sometimes people are gonna be, pe they gonna be, people gonna be people. You gonna have to walk away from them. Friends, family. You really don't have no friends, associates. You know, you might say you have a friend, cause I can say I do have a friend. I gotta ride and die for real, for real. You know, and we all have that one that we can call, and no matter what time it is, they coming. Stop leaving them, leave them folks back there that say, I got your back. And then when you need them, let me call you back in a few minutes. <laughs> but them your friends though, you call on everybody, but the person that you should call on. I'm gonna start calling on God. Ask him to send you somebody. Call on your prayer partner. Yes. Ask them to pray for you. But first of all, pray for yourself. Amen. Pray for some guidance. Because Satan is waiting on you. <laughs> Definitely waiting on you. Some of us came in here, he got a hold on our ankles right now with that string. She don't know what she talking about. She ain't talking about me. Ride and die. I got to ride and die. She don't know my friends. Well, maybe I don't. But neither do you. Not for real, for real. You know, what What would you do? Somebody done done something to you or one of your family members years ago. Maybe not years ago. Maybe last month. And they come up to you and they say, uh, Hey, Joyce, you know, I've been looking for you. I done gave my life to Christ. I done came back to God. I'm a Christian now. And God forgave me. And they reached their arm out for you, Christian folks, talking about us, to forgive them. Can you? Would you reach back out for a hug? Cause now, you can get into your feet your emotions going everywhere. That's the, oh, he done done. No, he didn't. <coughs> he ain't no Christian. After all that you done did, you don't tell me you a Christian, you done killed my brother. Come on now. You done stole my mother's money. Come on. You done raped my sister. You done did all this stuff and now you gonna call yourself a Christian? Hmm. Go stand in the mirror. You call yourself a Christian? All right, come on. 
You might have not did all that stuff, but you did something that somebody's questioning you about. Amen. Better start asking God for some strength so you can start forgiving some folks. Stop reaching in people's past because you're only an inch from what they're doing. And as I said earlier, if you're not doing it, lying, stealing, backbiting, gossiping, adultery, we can go on and name a whole lot of them. But I tell you what, out of all of them, we all are one of them. Some of us, two or three of them. Yeah, I'm going to check myself. I know you say you had to check yourself. <laughs> I'm going to check myself. But one thing about it, I know, I, I know I'm a child of the king. I fall. But I can dust myself off. I can learn to dust myself off. See, I ain't been a wallow in the mud like the pigs. You can talk about me. You can kick me. I'm going to cry. But guess what? I'm getting back up, I'm still good. Because I know who got me. You can talk about me, I'm good. Because I know I done gave somebody something to talk about. I done gave a whole lot of bodies something to talk about. And they still remember when. But look at me now. Better come get some. You can talk about me now, but talk about what I'm doing right now. Don't talk about what I used to do. Talk about, see me now. See me in the future. Not my past. See me for what I'm doing right now. But everybody don't want to see that. They want to hold you on the coat. You know, like them little, what you call them, little spinning wheels with that string on them. Want to spin you back around their way. <laughs> don't let them do it. We, all, we got those out there that want to do it too. So we need to ask God for some strength so we can forgive some folks because we've been hurt and we have hurt some people too. You know, but the main thing is asking God to give us the strength so when those people come back to us, we can forgive them. But most of all, give us the strength to go through to those people that we have hurt also because we all know somebody that we should be apologizing to. Finna call her. Finna call him. He was just as wrong as I was. You already admitting that you was wrong, but stop trying to blame it on the other person. Call him and apologize. That's all God asked you to do. And if you do right by him, don't worry about don't worry about if they forgive you. You did what you had to do. Step up. Step up to the calling that you have asked to be. You all, we all say we in the army of God. Okay. Well, put, put on your, your helmets and your, your, your guns and whatever else it is. You don't care no guns. Get your Bibles out. <laughs> That's your weapon. <laughs> Hit them with the word. Because <laughs> that other stuff going to destroy you. <laughs> and as I say, we do. We still kill. We kill our own wounded. You know, we see them down, and we still call them whatever they are, crackhead. Coming back to church on Sunday, joining church again. People come and join church again. And they, you know, come back and give their life to God. And then we just do this. Some of us don't even do that. We just look at them. Here she go again. <laughs> she back up there again. How many times she can join church? Five. <laughs> Girl, I, I ain't finna be happy for her. I ain't finna get, she's just getting up there to be seen. She won't be back Sunday. I'm not finna clap for her. She ain't giving herself back. But that's what we do. They didn't confess, they repented to God. Who are you not to accept them back? Who are you to judge? What if God judged us right away for what we do? Like we do folks, just pass judgment on them right away. 
What if God passed judgment on us right away? Where would we be? Mm. That's why God gave us this ministry right here. R-Y-L-M. Retrieve Your Life Ministries. To help people take back and retrieve their lives. We should count this a blessing. This is a privilege. Yes. It's an honor to be chosen to help people get their lives back. Amen. We might not have a big congregation, but it's a reason we don't. Stop being seat warmers. Go out. Help people retrieve their lives back. You are a member of Retrieve Your Life Ministry. Act like it. Don't just say the name. Work it. It's a reason. It's a reason God gave the pastor Retrieve Your Life Ministries, R-Y-L-M. Get them back. Help them come back. We need to help them come back, you all. We need to stop playing. Stop just being comfortable in our own little four walls right here. With our own little 30, 20, 10, sometimes five folks that we around. Stop, get out your comfort zone. Get out your little box. It ain't about you no more. It's about going out helping people get their lives back. We all know somebody that's failed. Go get them. Two or three people, go get them. Call your family member and ask them, are you all right? So what, she cussed you out. I'm gonna be talking to myself right now. My sister, she, she got me. <laughs> Lord, thank you. <laughs> cause I probably need to call her cause she cussed me out, she got me. And I just hung up on her. I ain't even go back with her, I just hung up on her. I probably just, I'm, I'm gonna call her today. Cause she's not here today. <laughs> but she got me. So that was, that was just for me, probably. But we all know somebody that's waiting on us, that we miss, we really miss. Get off your bun, stop heating up that seat, because that's not what it's for, and go get them back. Each and every one of us is a member of this ministry. Go out and retrieve. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel. Emmanuel.